And you're looking at five to ten K per amp. There you go. All right, guys, I'm going to go get uh, coffee and stuff, and I'll be back. Uh, you guys carry on. Uh, there's nothing uh, for Dan. There's no n nobody around, so it'll be a while. Yeah, Robert's in there, too. Good morning, Robert. Good morning. Got the net logger up and got everybody listed, so we're standing by in 780. Good morning, Robert. Hey, little Al. How you doing? Oh, pretty good. Help if I give you some amp. Yeah, I'm doing just fine. Good morning, Chuck. Good to hear from you this morning. And uh, there you go, Steve. Now you know how much you got to pay for an amp. <laughs> good morning, Chuck and uh, Robert. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was I was actually looking at the newer ones, but uh, I think they're only partial. Uh, uh, tube, uh, tubes, you know, you know, they have the tubes in there. I think they're more for looking at and for driving the finals. But uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll just we'll just keep looking. That's what we'll probably do if they cost that much. Uh, over to you, Robert. Good morning. Uh, actually, uh, uh, Dan N9OBB is in here. Good morning, Dan. Yeah, I was wondering what happened to you the last couple of weeks. Uh, you should give me a phone call, or yeah, you gotta get pretty early in the morning to get uh, to get in here before uh, uh, Steve and myself, over. He always calls me up about 6:30 and gets me, uh, you know, gets me on the radio here. So uh, no, that, that's not what happens. I just can't sleep any later than that. Anyway, <laughs> good to hear from you there, Dan. No, no, I said uh, you should probably let me know when you're not going to be on the net. I, I get worried, over. Yeah. Go to the hospital and they tie you down to bed. Can't do anything. Yeah, well, yeah, you need to stay on that hospital. I was down at the park this, this uh, week. I stopped in there for about an hour. Uh, watched this guy fish. Had a really nice uh, trout on the stringer. Anyway, so uh, good to have you there, Dan. I'm going to throw it over to Chuck real quick. NJ6D, K7ZYP. Yeah, good morning everybody to the group and yeah, glad to be on the on two meters here uh this morning. It's been a while, so I don't have a whole lot to add. But uh Steve yeah, the uh the old audio file the normal, uh you know, tube amplifiers, uh you can find them, uh but you you need to start searching and uh you know, if you're really into it, uh snag them when you can but I do I do a lot of I do a lot of reading up on uh, which ones uh, are worth the uh, the the going after and uh, I got a friend of mine that just down the road here he's a total auto audiophile in that case and uh, but in a good way um, and my god goodness uh, he finds deals but you have to just be very patient and no no good one when you see one and then be ready to jump uh, go ahead. Okay, I copy that there, Chuck. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'm that serious. I just uh, they, they look nice, and I know they used to sound like nice because I used to listen to a lot of them. I I don't I think I had an older one myself. Can't remember anything about it, but it's a smaller one. But uh, anyway, so Doug, if you're listening to the live stream, sounding uh, good and clean like uh, it has been lately, so it's all working well. Uh, anyway, uh, over to you, Robert. <laughs> Hey, Steve, real quick, uh, I'm going to kick off my live stream as well, so we'll have two today, and uh, that's all. Yeah, NJ-16, over to you, uh, Robert. Stuff set up here, so I don't, uh, we'll, we'll stand by. Uh, back to you guys in 780. Whiskey Live Romeo, Charlie Quebec. Good 
Good morning, Jerry. I heard you in there. Uh, sounding good. Yeah, good morning, Jerry. K7ZYP. Yeah, good morning, Al. You're sounding good this morning. I, uh, the forecast says rain, but uh, hopefully uh, we won't get any. Uh, we had 0.45 uh, overnight last night, Jerry. I got just looking at my rain gauge. I got uh, almost two tenths of an inch, which uh, was more than that at uh, the Weather Bureau forecast. But uh, well, they said we were going to have a rainy spring, so I guess we are. Yeah, well, I'm up to over four inches uh, of rain here uh, for, since the first of the year, so that's that's pretty high on this side of town. Yeah, well, Tucson gets a little more rain than uh, we do, particularly the, the west side of Phoenix is drier than the east side, but uh, oh well. Uh, the uh, local water company is keep jacking up their rates. So my my last water bill was eighty bucks. Yeah, it's happening down here too. <clears throat> so, but you know, uh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe you, you know, finally here in the desert, uh, they're going to start charging uh, what it's really worth, and that'll make people think twice about w watering the sidewalks. Well, that's their excuse for raising the price. <laughs> I don't know. Oh well, uh, I guess uh, I, I don't use as much water as I once did because there's only me, and I try to be really careful with it. But uh, I usually enjoy a good rain, but uh, not not on uh, the day of uh, all of our activities, uh, ham radio activities. Uh, well, as long as it's just rain, not thunder lightning, I'm happy. <laughs> Yep, I did not hear any boomers last night, so uh, they said there could be some, but it, it was, it, but it rained hard for, I don't know, 45 minutes. I mean, it really came down. Anyway, uh, maybe Doug's back, uh, but uh, you're going to have a nice signal down here uh, today, Jerry. The uh, new setup is working well. Well, thank you. Uh, you're sounding good up here also. Uh, I'm uh, changing out a chunk of coax on Monday. Gene's going to come back down, and uh, I'm going to uh, add a piece of uh, Heliax from uh, my uh, input to the shack wall over around the base of the tower. I ran across the piece, so uh, I can't hang it on the tower because the tower won't handle Heliax, but uh, at least for my 432 run, I'm going to have 50 feet of Heliax. Yeah, instead of uh, what I've got now, so hopefully that will help. Oh yeah, I, I'm sure uh, you'll you'll get a, a few dB, a couple dB at least, maybe three out of it, um, and that never hurts. Yeah, well, I've been going through the rejuvenating the shack and everything, and I discovered that I was using a piece of uh, a Belden RG8 uh, from uh, my wall box over to the back of the radio, about 20 feet of it, that uh, must have been in there for 15 uh, years at least, and I didn't even realize that it was RG8. So anyway, uh, I'm, and I was using it on 2 meters and 432, so uh, no longer. Uh, there's LMR 400 there now. That uh, sounds good, Jerry. I I went through a similar uh, recycling of uh, most of my uh, antenna feeds uh, a year or so ago, and uh, definitely has made a difference uh, overall. So it's you know aside from things uh, getting a little uh, long in the tooth there, but uh, it's also uh, just in uh, taking the, the, the coax feeds uh, one 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 or two notches up uh, in the uh, performance. So anyway, uh, NJ60 will stand by. Yeah, believe I think he'll be standing by. Yeah, I just got a text from uh, Dan, and uh, they're out camping. So no, uh, which is too bad because right now there's a triple seven uh, headed right to the sweet spot for me. And, uh, oh, that would be uh, a 10 over 9 uh, contact <laughs> if it uh, if he was there. But no Dan, uh, uh, no air scatter with Dan today. So there we go. And, um, yeah, I uh, we got uh, 32 hundredths of an inch of rain 
overnight. I did. I slept so soundly. I never heard a, a, a bit. I knew there was some predicted, but uh, according to the weather service, something on the order of maybe a tenth of an inch. We got 32 hundreds. And then maybe a little spell this afternoon, and then tonight again um, uh, into the uh, midnight hour or so. I think uh, there was uh, some more forecast of uh, a good, about a, a, a good chance of rain then too. So who knows? Um, I know Al probably got five inches, but uh, we're at three, three point sixty five hundredths of an inch uh, for the year uh, here. So a little bit under four inches. So no complaints, uh, quite above average for uh, for this time of the year. And certainly this time of the year heading into April, and it's usually uh, uh, pretty darn dry. Anyway, uh, I see everybody out there. Uh, uh, Mike, uh, good morning. Good morning, Doug. Uh, yeah, we got uh, point four. Three after midnight, 0.02 before, so 0.45 total with some pretty good winds, uh, most of it around 3 o'clock this morning, over. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I have no idea when this all hit, uh, but uh, yeah, I did I did do uh, a few things because of some wind uh, predictions for today and uh, trying to uh, batten down the hatches, so to speak, a little bit here, but... Um, Anyway, uh, yeah, that's that's great. So you guys got it over on that side, uh, probably over here, which is which is pretty typical. Um, I don't know which which direction it was coming from, but anyway, we'll take what we can get. Um, and uh, right now, my backyard is really uh, starting to look pretty darn good with everything uh, with these winter rains. Um, yeah, and boy, the desert out here is just got it's like a, a carpeted with green grass almost only only good thing is, about it is uh, you don't have to pay for it uh, to water it and you don't have to mow it k7 eme said that zyp go ahead al a little over five and a half inches doug yeah i'm surprised it's not more than that that's that's still that's for the year right no, that was over. No, yes, that was for the year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're, we're uh, rafting down the the sand wash right now. Yeah. Uh, is that right? All right. Let's see. We got uh, Ron KW7RNX. Ron, are you uh, are you up and about? Okay, got you, got you in there, uh, Ron. We well, got you on the list. So thanks for checking in. And 60 AZ. Good morning, sunshine. WD7R. All right, uh, two of you in there. And 60 AZ. Good morning, Jim. How you doing? Okay, drying out. Guess we got quite a bit of rain here last night. So what, uh, do you have a rain gauge? No, I heard it. <laughs> it woke me up. Wow. Okay. So uh, down there, you guys got a, a good bit of rain. Awesome. Um, you have to get a rain gauge. Uh, that's, you know, um, you got to get one out there. Yeah, it's uh, kind of funny when, uh, I think it was last year when there was so little rain, report, I found it hard to believe that uh, they seemed to just for through the entire monsoon season barely recorded any rain, and yet I got drenched here. Uh, so <laughs> it definitely varies by region. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's the thing about it. And, uh, you know, our, our little local climate here is uh, in the monsoons when they're coming up from the south, uh, you know, if it's coming from the due south, a lot of times they'll they'll hit the Tucson mountains and split out to the either side, and uh, we don't get it um, here. It'll be all around us uh, over in Avra Valley and over in uh, uh, Tucson, but uh, nothing here. So it just you know a lot of the I think the the mountains kind of steer things around. It's weird, but uh, anyways, well welcome aboard. Uh, uh, there, Jim, and uh, we got you on the list, okay? All right, very good. Probably have to watch the puck here in a minute, but uh, we'll be here. 
Sounds good. And good morning up to uh, Captain Mike. How you doing up there, buddy? Hey, good morning, Captain Doug. Good to hear you and all. Uh, yeah, beautiful day out there. We got a little rain last night, too, I think. So anyway, uh, put me on the list, and uh, I'm going to make some uh, some eggs this morning, uh, uh, probably uh, uh, like a veggie omelet or something. Does that sound good? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, that uh, it sounds real good. I like, uh, I, you know, I'm a uh, little bit of spinach, uh, a small amount of uh, of uh, tomato. Uh, who knows what else? Yeah, yeah, roll it up there, man. Yeah, I got you covered. We got uh, spinach, uh, tomatoes, and uh, probably some mushrooms, maybe, maybe just a little cheese, you know, not too much. But, yeah, good to hear you, Doug, this morning, and uh, uh, thanks for letting me join the show. WD7R, I'll be here. Yeah, mushrooms always work too. Okay, sounds good. All right, Mike, we got you. Uh, we got you down there. Uh, let's see. Anybody else out there? Comment. Yeah, I was just going to ask you a question too, Robert. Go ahead. Always oh, talking about breakfast. I just got handed a plate full of three eggs and uh, some pancakes and bacon. How about that, Laura? Right. Oh wow. Uh, that that sounds very very nice, man. Uh, Marty, uh, you're taking good care of that guy. <laughs> well, sorry, she's uh, she's in the kitchen now. She's cleaning up the uh, the mess. But anyway, no, I appreciate that because um, I'm leaving tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, we're uh, having fun with it, over. Yeah, yeah, that's my question. I, I couldn't remember when you were leaving. Uh, so you're gonna you're gonna be gone for two days, right? Uh, no, I'll be gone a week. Uh, I won't be back till Saturday, or. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Well, we'll we'll be in touch. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm good for. Uh, I'll leave here, uh, you know, early uh, Tuesday morning and get up there uh, by six, if not a little before. Yeah. Okay. Um, sounds good. So Tuesday, uh, Tuesday morning, uh, I'm on for April second. Yep. Roger. Fantastic. All right. Carry on in seven PD. Yep. K seven EME. Anybody else out there? W seven WHB. Morning, Steve. How you doing? We're checking the islands already. Say what? Okay, we're trying to get the eyelids open. Oh, okay. I thought you said something about olives, and Mike was talking about veggie uh, eggs, and I don't know. My my ears are not uh, open either. Yeah, well, my Leo Bodar takes a long time to warm up, so that might distort me a little bit also. Yeah, you sound pretty close, but, uh, yeah, no problem. It's, it's more my ears. Uh yeah, um, it takes takes a while. Older I get, the longer it uh, longer it takes. Anyways, uh, we got you down. Roger, Roger, we'll be standing by and looking at the moisture that rained here last night. You uh, you get a lot of rain? Uh, about uh, one o'clock in the morning, so about two uh, thirty. It rained pretty hard at my location. Excellent. Boy, that sounds like it was a nice widespread uh, uh, rain event. So very, very cool. And uh, I, I, at least down here, I know their uh, Mother Nature's not done yet, although uh, it looks pretty darn um, quite a bit of uh, open sky there. Uh, got some sunshine at the moment. Anyway, uh, go get those eyelids opened up. Hey, Roger, Roger. Okay, we'll do. Yeah, we got uh, 11 hundredths of an inch, according to my weather station. All right. Very here. And, uh, oh, Chuck, my uh, <coughs> my uh, ICOM 705 uh, uh, PTT board came in yesterday. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, you'll like it. Uh, it, it. It takes about uh, all of 15 minutes uh, to put it in, and most of that time is spent uh, putting, unscrewing the back of the 705 and screwing it back in. 
Yeah, I've I've had that board uh, out before because I I ordered the uh, replacement um, switchers um, uh, transistors and uh, uh, for it, and then I it, to 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 get and identify how what I was going to be have to do to to get it fixed. And uh, so what I'll do is I'll pull that board out and fix it because I have the components. So why not? And then um, and then I'll have uh, I'll have this uh, other board with this bigger MOSFETs to to uh, to do. So looking forward to that. I don't know if I'll get it done this week or not, but uh, I would like to have it done for the trip up uh, to uh, Mesa on uh, a week from Tuesday. So anyway, we'll we'll see. Uh, let's see. Anybody else out there? I don't see anybody lurking. Oh, I do now. It just popped up. W7ADF. Uh, good morning, Jim. You got your radio on yet, W7ADF? Hi, Reem. W7ADF. Hey, Jim. How you doing? All right. Uh, you don't think you have your amplifier on. It was a little weak there. But anyway, you'll be able to stick around. Yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, there, Robert. I his antennas pointed, and yeah, I guess he doesn't have his amp on. Anyway, Mike uh, ND7E, are you uh, on the radio? Well, good morning, uh, Al. Yeah, I just finished my first cup of coffee, so. Uh Almost grabbed the wrong mic here. I had my HF mic laying here next to uh, my uh, ICOM 9700. And of course, nobody's ever done that, grabbed the wrong mic, right? No, no, I've never done that. Never, never, never. Uh, I used to, <laughs> Robert used to, <laughs> when I had all, all 9700s, uh, and uh and uh, then the hf icom and all of that uh and different transverters through different 97 i was always grabbing the wrong mic now i've got 160 through meters through 2304 one microphone one uh one uh, flex and it's all good so i know what that's all about anyway you're you're sticking around right mike yeah i'll go ahead and stick around yeah that reminds me when i was uh when I uh, first learned ham radio uh, and got licensed, I was living down in Alabama, and I just got my general, and uh, about a month later, I woke up early in the morning, half awake, before I had my coffee, and there was a guy in Japan, and I grabbed my mic, and I didn't even think about it, but he was down in the extra portion, and I made a QSO with him, and I thought, well, after it was all said and done, I said, well, I... I messed this one up. Hopefully nobody was out there listening, but uh, nobody came back. And it was funny. And I talked to guys in the local ham club, and they were laughing about it. And they said, yeah. Anyway, good morning, everyone. And uh, ND70, back to you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think everybody's probably uh, been guilty of that at one time or another in the heat of the battle. And uh, especially with the older days when uh, frequency uh, uh, readouts were, you know, plus or minus five uh, or ten uh, KCs, yeah, it would have been. I'm sure I've done it before. I, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, sounds good, Mike. No, n n um, I think the statute of limitations. Let me. I'm taking a wild guess here, but it's probably run out. So I don't think anybody would be coming after you. Uh, Lynn, K7HAM, uh, morning up there in uh, Gilbert, Lynn. Morning, Doug. And, uh, just rolled out of bed, thought I'd check in, and uh, we'll be sticking around. Sounds awesome. Uh, welcome aboard. We got you on the list.
this is K7EME for the Arizona SWATnet doing early check-ins. Anybody out there? WB7DYU. Uh, WB7DYU, good morning, John. How are you doing up there? I just woke up uh, doing great, though. Very good. I'm just getting you written in here. Have you had a chance to try Pete's uh, FT817 out? Yeah, I've been putting uh, things together on it, uh, buying batteries for it. Uh, it's a uh, neat little rig, though. Yeah, I agree. Uh, they uh, they were a he way ahead of their time with uh, what they packed into that thing with, uh, you know, all the way up to UHF and everything. That was, uh, you know, that was a that's a classic uh, a classic radio, and I, I apparently they're still making them uh, the latest uh, version of it. But anyway, it's a it's a it's a good radio. I'm glad you. Uh, I'm glad you're able to grab it and be looking forward to uh, seeing what you do with it. Anyway, we got you on the list, uh, John. Thanks for uh, checking in. No problem. Doug. Yeah, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, let Chuck know that your his live stream sounded real good too, just like yours, Doug. Uh, both of them are perfect. And I, I don't know if you caught it last week, but we had more live stream watchers last week than ever. There was a solid nine people listening on your uh, live stream last week, there, Doug. Oh wow! Uh, you know, I never look at them. Uh to see i i actually just brought up one of the other monitors in here and it, it comes up um there on uh uh right away on mine probably because of because i'm the one or on the origin but mine comes up um and so very good that's that's awesome nine uh nine folks that means there's nine people that are out there listening that uh you know, may not be able to hear everybody else, and uh, hopefully, uh, I mean, that's that's the reason for it. Um, I I doubt we'll ever get more than <laughs> that's probably a record for the ages. Ten seven VD. Yeah, Robert. Yeah, you're becoming quite the YouTube uh, social media influencer. You have 17 subscribers, of which I'm proudly one. Over. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, that uh, that's pretty cool. I I'm uh, I'm in double figures. <laughs> I know. Uh, I, I don't know what it takes uh, to trigger the algorithm for YouTube to start paying attention to you and start uh, adding. <laughs> well, I doubt, <laughs> I doubt that'll ever happen. I don't know. You know, you see these guys, these SpaceX guys. Uh, you know, the folks involved with that. I mean, some of them have a million subscribers. I know. I know. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, if you start making money for YouTube, they'll be sending you a nice little uh, plaque or over. I'm not going to hold. Um, I, I, I'm just waiting for the big bucks to start rolling in. Hey, Doug. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I met this guy that he's got a YouTube channel uh, that he uh, it's KC9 uh, UDX and uh, he's he <laughs> he has an old two meter AM uh, radio uh, net that he uses the same radio that that Bodak or I picked up. 
so I, I've been swapping emails back and forth with him probably about a dozen or so. But anyway, um, so I shared with him and uh, the two meter uh, net uh, live stream of yours, and uh, he was getting so a lot of people liking it. I think it was pretty awesome. Just thought I'd share that. Yeah, well, maybe he'll uh, put his two meter uh, AM uh, on. Hey, I got a question for you. You bought a, a crystal for your. Uh, for your radio there i i need to do the same uh for my uh my little am rig because i i want to join you guys robert and everybody that's doing this uh for horizontal uh two meter am and i i what your your did you uh what was the exact frequency you ordered Oh boy, I gotta look it up now, Doug. But I, I had to make sure it wasn't on any repeater frequencies. It was on the. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, general communications area of the band. I'll, let me get back with you on that, okay? Yeah, yeah, I'd appreciate it <clears throat> because obviously we'll all want to want to get on the same uh, uh, theme as uh, Jerry's uh, guys, so we can uh, maybe hook up with them too. Yeah, they're, they're they're getting really hard to find. I'm telling you, I, I just was lucky to find one that wasn't in a repeater area, you know, what have you, just to get the radio tested. You almost need a VFO, and there's some out there, but uh, they're rare and hard to find. Yeah, I have one somewhere, but I do not. I could not find it. Um, but I, I have one that's a Johnson and one that is a um, a Helicrafters. Uh, so, but I, you know, and then you got to find the right voltages for the power supplies and stuff. So I'd have to build uh, a, probably a standalone because my uh, my radio is not a Helicrafters nor a um, a Johnson. So I ha well I do have one, but it's just a transmitter uh, for a Johnson six and two. Anyway, yeah, just some food for thought for down the road. Hey, Doug. Yeah. I'll let you know if nothing else. I'll uh, send you an email where I got it. Uh, but the problem is he's got a whole bunch of them. This one guy from eBay, but and he's got some multiples. But I don't know if he had. I don't think he had multiples of this one I got. So anyway, I'll let you know. And seven THW back in it. Yeah, and uh, Chuck, I suppose I bet you've got an idea about using a Digilo with a with a uh, a little uh, amplifier and running uh, running that. Oh, really close, Doug. Uh, very, very close. So uh, I'm going to post a link in the uh, AIM window. There's Troy and I have been going back and forth on uh, uh, you know crystal frequencies, oscillators, primarily for the microwave. But he stumbled across this thing called Prog Rock, P R O G R O C K, Prog Rock, programmable rock. So it's basically a little teeny tiny uh, crystal sized programmable synthesizer. It's uh, you can it, it, it you can make it into a little programmable crystal and uh, set it for whatever frequency you want to have it be, run at. Yeah, yeah. See, there you go. And then the the question would be how much drive uh, you might have to have to do some kind of an uh, an amplifier. As some of those, especially if they're tube, uh, you know, they may need a, a little bit more drive to get it to oscillate that first uh, stage. No, this this will go straight in the crystal socket. So what what you know, the crystal doesn't need a lot of drive. No, I think this this is almost like a drop in uh, frequency source in place of a crystal. So I think it would just work. Well, that would be even better. Uh, yeah, put that link up there. Uh, I'm sure uh I'm sure there'll be some folks interested so yeah I and me included uh sounds pretty awesome <laughs> forget the yeah that would be the way to go <clears throat> let's see I've got uh Robert N7 uh LPD is uh out there lurking uh go ahead Robert Good morning Doug yeah it's listening to the conversation here it sounds pretty interesting I'll have to listen up more uh as you guys talk about it, but what's this uh, YouTube channel of yours? Uh, I, I spend a lot of time on YouTube, so I'd be interested to check it out. Oh, <clears throat> yeah, okay. My voice is, uh, and the dogs are barking in the background there. It's um, it's it's a live stream that both Chuck and I do. Um, there's two of us, in case one of us can't uh, 
um, can't be here to, to do it. Uh, the one I have, the, the links are, are you on NetLogger? Yeah. Okay, scroll up on the instant messaging, uh, and the, the two links are there. You can check them both out. So the advantage um, is that, you know, the guys that, that are either on the outlying areas and can't hear, uh, you, you'll, you'll hear everybody as uh, Chuck and I hear them from our stations. Um, and um, so that, that, is, uh, that is the advantage. So if you're, for example, up in Kingman and you're trying to check in, but you're only, you're only hearing me and maybe a couple of the other guys, uh, you can hear the whole net, and it's a lot more interesting than listening to dead air on two meters. Okay, good deal. I am not seeing that instant messenger on here. Where is that at on the window? Look up at the AIM window at the top. It's a blue uh, right in the center. Over. Oh, got it. Okay, appreciate it. All right, I'll be standing by for the net then. Uh, good deal. And 7 LPD. Yeah, and right next to that is a button for viewing monitors. Those are the ones you can see who's actually monitoring this net. That's how we uh, pick up uh, for the guys that pop in there. Anyway, it looks like you got K7 LOL out there, over. Yep, I was going to just uh, hop right on to Dave there. And uh, so, Dave, go ahead. K7 LOL, are you by the uh, by the radio yet? Yeah, he came back to you. K7 LOL, N7 Victor Delta, you'll be able to stick around. All right, fantastic. He's there. Over. Yeah. Okay. He's not as strong as usual, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, he will get will get uh, hooked up later, peaked up. Uh, Got gotcha you there, Dave. You're on the list. Anyway, uh, back to the. Uh, two meter AM stuff. Uh, you, I don't think you have to worry about too much about uh, crystals for me because the regen receivers, I, I probably you have half the uh, two meter bandwidth in the past band over. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, with your, uh, you know, there there were a couple of uh, really nice examples of uh, tours uh, for sale on, uh, I don't know where I saw them, YouTube, uh, not YouTube um, eBay. Uh, this week, and they they weren't that expensive. The cases looked uh, really, really nice. Yeah, and that's I, I just remembered. I know I've worked the uh, six meter one, but I don't know if we ever got because I think I gave it to uh, uh, Tim to play with, and I don't think he got it going. He, I, I got him some replacement tubes, but I may have to get that thing out and uh, double check what's going on over. Yeah, I mean, because it, it, it'll be fun uh, to play with. I'm sure that, that one I have will work. And, uh, of course, uh, yeah, we, we put a little bit of that into, the, uh, into an amplifier, and uh, we could have some fun. Uh, uh, yeah, rig here is a Heathkit uh, tour, and I'm running uh, Legal Limit. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Imagine feeding the, the uh, tour into this uh, OM app. That'll be fun. Yeah, I will, you know, I'm sure somebody's done it. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, it'll be fun. I'll, I'll double check, but I'm sorry, my plate's full for a month or over. Oh, I hear you. Well, mine's going to be full too because on Friday, Chuck has uh, uh, let me know that he is available and uh, the rest of the uh, array is coming down and uh, we'll get things started. So the new, uh, the new reworked uh, tower number three is on its way as of Friday. So I've been scrambling around. I'm going to get all the tools uh, into the uh, Denali. It'll be a mobile workshop. And I take that over there. I've got. I just put in the uh, the uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries, and so we'll have uh, power in case we need to use a cutting wheel or anything. And we are ready to uh, get started on that. So it may be a few weeks, but uh, but we're gonna get rolling on that. And uh, so we'll have it started before Kansas City, and then after we get back, 
Uh, we'll continue right on. Um, so there we go. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it. Really do. Anyway, we'll uh, jump out and let you get going here in 780. Yeah, and I appreciate uh, everything Chuck is uh, is doing with that. He's he's planning out everything down to the uh, um, nitty gritty, and uh, so everything will be as safe as possible and and as streamlined as possible. So the uh, the the uh, other half of the array that's been on the ground for a couple months is now rebuilt. The uh, uh, t trusses are uh, tweaked up. A little bit of final final tuning before uh, it goes up, but it is rebuilt and ready to go back up. So uh, we're uh, we're on our way. And yesterday I laid out um, all my uh, spare. Heliax, uh, seven eighths Heliax, and I made it uh, enough. There's enough to go about two thirds of the way back to the uh, tower. So with the seven eighths that goes from the shack here up to the 432 antenna where it is on the present tower, I think I will have enough. Uh, uh, all I've got to do is one of the pieces of coax has no uh, no connectors on it, so I've got to I got to put those on, and I have them and. Uh, uh, so I will be uh, I will be all set with Heliax, uh, if not all the way, at least within ten feet of the bottom of the tower. So that uh, that'll get me started anyway. So I got I got the uh, seven eighths run uh, for port thirty two covered. Anyway, I babble on K seven EME for the Arizona SWATnet. Anybody else wanting to check in? W seven W eight three question. Yeah, go ahead. You said Kansas City. What's up with that? Uh, yeah, Robert uh, is bringing his dad down from uh, Kansas City. Olathe, if I'm saying that right, uh, south of Kansas City, but basically Kansas City. And I'm going to help him uh, drive. Uh, so I uh, we're going to have we're going to have a road trip with radio. Oh, okay. Well, I heard you mentioning Kansas City. Robert and I is from the same basic area as Kansas City. And uh, when you said it, I was halfway paying attention. I'm going, what? He's going, Doug's going to Kansas City? So I just thought I would ask. Yeah, there you go. So we'll we'll get all the, the net uh, stuff. Uh, I, um, the, uh, the Sunday net, uh, we're getting back on Saturday late probably up uh, to mesa and uh, then i'll have a couple hours to to go to get down here saturday night i may uh crash for a few hours uh just to get a nap in before i do that drive by my by my by myself uh I, as al knows it's hard to stay awake <laughs> so it depends uh but anyway we're gonna have al run the net uh that uh that sunday and uh, I'll uh, I'll be able to check in. I'll get here, but I don't know that I'll be uh, uh, wanting to uh, do the the uh, net control. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put it up to uh, to uh, Al and uh, Steve and Chuck uh, uh, for net logger and for uh, the live stream. And uh, I'm gonna take a break on that one. Well, you know, you shouldn't torture yourself. If you guys really wanted to, you could make the trip one way. Uh, one way, you can make the trip in less than 16 hours. Yeah. Well, we're yeah. The plan. Robert's got it all scoped out. We're gonna we're gonna uh, grab a a little bit of rest in Abilene, uh, or what is it? Amarillo, Amarillo, uh, Texas. Uh, so there's a, a place there we're gonna we're gonna hunker down for a few hours and get recharged. So it's not gonna be that that big a deal. Roger, Roger. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to it, and um, so it'll be uh, it, it'll be fun. It, just a little uh, get out of get out of out of town, and um, <clears throat> we got a. We got to test that monster rocket uh 700 horsepower uh go-kart that he's got. So we may we may get there in um oh, I don't know. What do you figure 7 hours, 8 hours? No, I can't go that fast. Tires aren't rated for it. 
The tires are rated for it. Oh, God. Oh, that's scary, actually. Holy cow. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, and then it's red, so it's got, you know, pull me over written all over it. You guys have seen that thing, bright red, you know, the, the brightest thing in the in the whole Hamfest parking lot. Uh, you can actually make it in less time than that, Robert. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you don't want to exceed the rating of your truck. Highway patrol bait. Yeah, they, uh, I, I think the color is called Arrest Me Red. ND7E. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Al, if you're going to Amarillo, you need to take the, uh, you need to stop at the Big Texan Steakhouse and mm -hmm. see if you can do the, the steak challenge. You get a free steak if you can eat it. I, I have to ask, how big is this steak? <laughs> uh, let's see, 74 ounces, I believe it is. Yeah, it's like five pounds of meat there, and uh, that's a heart attack on a plate there, over. Yeah, I'm not sure that. That's, a, that's like a roast, not a steak. I, I, I just can't imagine the pain. If anything else, uh, go there and get you like a T-bone or ribeye, but uh, and uh, you can watch. You know they they have a lifted platform with a timer above it, and so three people at a time can take the challenge. I went there and there was a couple guys trying to do it, and I walked up to one guy and he was I was he was laughing. He said, "Yeah, there's no way I can do this, but I just had to, you know, do it for the." for the experience so i <clears throat> i also got to ask what do they charge for the steak i believe it's uh, around 100 bucks now yeah, and i'm not surprised in fact i wouldn't be surprised if it was more wow uh <clears throat> you know just to see that uh the size of uh, a slab of five pounds of meat on a on a plate uh yikes I've I've been on a diet for two months and uh, I don't I don't think I'll be attempting that. Yeah, if you want a few laughs, go on YouTube and just uh, look it up. The uh, Big Texan Steakhouse, but they've actually had small people uh, that have done that. You know, like these women that weigh you know 120 pounds soaking wet that have actually eaten the whole thing. I don't know how they do it, but uh, it's pretty amazing. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's like those uh, those little gals that do the um, do the uh, um, uh, what is it? The hot dog eating contest. And sometimes you see the winner of it and, you know, soaking wet. Like you say, it, it, they're uh, they're one hundred and twenty pounds and uh, and they've got one hundred and twenty hot dogs in them. Yeah, how, how the human body can endure such punishment is beyond my comprehension. Yeah, well, I, I certainly would be one of the guys with the heart attack. That, that would, uh, oh, I just, I can't imagine it. Anyway, there, <laughs> uh, how did we get on that? That's an interesting subject, though. I gotta, I'll have to look on YouTube. Anyway, anybody else out there wanting to check in, uh, K7EME? Good morning, Warren. How are you doing up there? Oh, well, just another day, another whatever, so uh, nothing exciting ever happens here. And uh, I'm here anyhow. All right. Well, uh, you know, the kind of lifestyle I, I lead uh, out here in the boonies, uh, 
Uh, that's what the, a good day is a non exciting day there, Warren. Yep, yep, non exciting day. That's a good way to put it. But uh, I'm here. I guess there's a 15% chance of rain and more rain, uh, higher probability, whatever, for tomorrow and uh, Tuesday, I guess, and then again next Sunday. So Easter Sunday might be raining. That's interesting. I'll mess up a lot of sunrise services. Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't know it was uh, still rain in the forecast that far out. Wow. Um well, uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, around here, I checked as of 5 o'clock this morning, um, there was uh, a little bit of a chance around midday again uh, of rain here. And then uh, this evening, uh, through the through the evening up past uh, midnight, a uh, fairly significant uh, chance of rain again uh, yet tonight and into tomorrow morning. So, yeah, uh, we're uh, we're certainly blessed. The the desert is so green. The Saguaro National Park is just beautiful. Uh, driving through there, it just the 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 uh, uh, even the cliffs look green. I mean, it's uh, it's pretty neat. So we'll take it. Um, haven't had a spring like this in a long, long time. There's going to be a lot of rabbits uh, born. Uh, probably. Uh, Probably a lot of uh, rats and uh, rabbits, and then later on coyotes, and uh, further up the food chain, uh, I will bet. I'm already seeing quite a few chipmunks and rabbits around here. Anyway, anybody else out there? K7 EME. I see uh, uh, Dave is in there. Uh, uh, David, uh, KJ7 TSM, are you copying? KJ7TSM, are you uh, out there? This is K7EME taking early check-ins for the Arizona SWAT net. Standing by. Hey, Doug, got time for a quick question? Oh, absolutely. Go ahead, Mike. WD7R, have you heard from Grant, uh, WD6TNF, lately? Um, he hasn't checked in uh, since I've been back uh, to the roundtable. No, I have not, and uh, of course he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't do the Sunday morning thing. It mostly it's uh, it's your group on Tuesday nights, and so I I have not heard from him. Maybe uh, time to shoot him an email. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Um, remember if he checked in on Sundays or not, but. Uh he might occasionally, but anyway, I'll send him an email and uh, uh, see. Hopefully, he responds there. Hopefully, he's doing okay. WD seven R, thanks. Yeah, good, uh, good call there. Um, you know, he sometimes they do go out to visit his daughter out there. I think she's in California, so it could be that. But he usually tells us uh, when he's going over there. Let's see, Mike uh, KD five NLP. Are you by the radio? could be on travel. I'm sorry. I doubled with you there, uh, Mike. Go ahead. Uh, sorry about that. I said you're right. He's got one daughter on each coastline. Uh, east. That's right. He's got uh, was the other one's in uh, Washington, D.C. or something. Poor thing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. Man, I wouldn't want to live back there. The traffic, oh yeah, yeah. 
Anyways, uh, let's see if uh, KD5NLP is listening. Okay, I'm looking out toward the east and the southeast. Anybody uh, out that way for the Arizona SWAT net? m 9 obc I got you there, uh, Dan. How you doing? Not too bad, Dan. Uh, I'm finally home from the hospital. I'm boy, that's enjoyable. Uh, I just got to get my strength back. I'll be doing all right, over. Yeah, I heard you, uh, you, you loved it so much the first time you went back for uh, another uh, visit. Oh, man. Well, do they give you, uh, you know, at, at least uh, they should be like uh, buy two, get one free, maybe? I don't know if that's the way it works or not. I haven't got the bill yet. Oh. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm just teasing you. I'm glad you're feeling better and uh, uh, try to uh, try to limit it to three visits here, uh, okay? That would be great. That would be great. Thanks for getting me in there, Doug. Good night, OBB. Okay, well, uh, we got you in. Actually, you're in at number six. I think Robert uh, must have heard you in there earlier. So you're uh, you're at number six on the rotation. Okay, well, thank you, Robert. Appreciate you getting me in there. And nine OBB. All right, let me check a little further to the east. Uh, let's see if we got anybody out there, K7 EME. And let's look up toward the north. Uh, Lee, are you out there this morning, uh, uh, K7 EME? Let's look out to the west. K7 EME for the Arizona SWAT net. We got any lurkers out that way? Question. Yeah, go ahead. Are you on a single antenna now, Doug? Yeah, I'm on a single antenna that has a 1.8 to 1 SWR, and uh, it uh, is drooping horribly, and uh, it probably has uh, corroded, uh, arced over end connectors. So, yes, that is what we're down to here. Okay, because I've noticed the last... Two or three. Uh, well, since you you said you had that arcing going on with one of the one of the antennas there, I notice now that uh, last two three weeks that uh, when you go to like the east or the northeast, I almost lose you. Whereas before I never used to lose you at all, but uh, now I start to lose you. Yeah, they're um, it's really compromised, and so <clears throat> you know I have to run less power as well. Because if I push it all the way up to legal limit, that arcing, if it happens again, it it could be, uh, you know, uh, the amp will be okay. But you just don't want to have that going on. It creates a lot of uh, RFI. Uh, my signal goes to heck and um, all of that, all of the above. So I, I'm i just uh, limping along. But uh when uh, when this is done, um, the new mast, new rotor, and uh, the antennas will be rebuilt. And uh, um, like I say, it'll be back to and and then the phasing lines are are going to be Heliax instead of uh, LMR 400. They will be tuned as well with the VNA, so they'll be much more efficient uh, than what uh, what I had before. 
antennas will not be uh, slow uh, drooping and uh, it's going to be all good so and then the uh, after that the uh, the preamps are going to be out there so I'll I'll hear much better as well so anyway that's the the plan and then in my 432 Yagi will be up between those two and it's in a much higher spot on the uh, property uh, where that tower is at so 432 will be vastly improved as well so really 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 looking forward to that anyway we'll see i'm i'm really anxious to see how surge uh, uh comes in here with that new setup when it gets going but uh and uh it's going up and it's uh it's going to be uh much more stout uh and won't have to worry about the uh monsoon winds uh with the new uh uh, mast and uh, a rotor that's uh, probably four times stronger than the one that's up there now. Anyway, that's a that's a big rundown. Uh, let's see, anybody else out there? K7 EME. This is K7EME for the Arizona SWATnet taking early check-ins. Uh, anybody around? Standing by for early check-ins for the Arizona SWATnet.
Uh, good morning, Barry, KC7VEQ. How are you doing this morning? Did You were on vacation, right? Uh, well, kind of, yeah. We got to the, uh, the NASCAR race. So, uh, we didn't do another thing. But that did. Uh, the signal there is a very strong. I was just kidding. I was Yeah, you're you're down a little bit uh, today from your average um, just conditions, I think. But uh, so I'm missing a few words here and there. But uh, but um, definitely, uh, you know, you're uh, you're eighty percent copy. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I was just checking in. Yeah, I don't hear that. I was. I was I'm back up again. So, um, you, um, hope everybody has a Okay, yeah, just uh, a, a little bit of trouble there uh, this morning, uh, Barry, but uh, as always, I appreciate you stopping by and uh, checking in. All right, very good. No problem. All right, well, thank you for your time. Okay, catch you later, K7EME, and I see uh, Richard is out there lurking uh, down by the border, uh, KF7TXE, uh, dropping by via uh, NetLogger, so good morning to you, Richard. Hey, uh, Chuck, how's your uh, band noise, uh, the noise floor today over there? Uh, it's extremely good right now. Uh, Very, uh, depending on which direction I have the antenna. But, uh, you know, I've got maybe half an S unit uh, on the flux here. Uh, the propagation is kind of weird. And some stations that I'm usually hearing really strong are, are above the noise floor. And just uh, the last station you were talking to, you, you were saying he was 80%, and he's just booming in here. So uh, I don't know what's going on. It's strange conditions. Yeah, it, it never ceases to amaze me how, you know, you can be uh – um, you know, a few miles apart, and one person uh, hears what another one can. It just, it's crazy. But, uh, but yeah, I was having some trouble with, uh, with uh, Barry there. So, yep, go figure. Um, uh, definitely looking forward to your help there on the antenna system. Yep, I was going to make a comment to that uh, when it comes to my turn. But, yeah, I, I'm, I've been uh, mulling it over. I think the uh, uh, the basic uh, plan that I uh, that popped into my head uh, the other day as I was heading out, out and getting back on the road, I think is the approach I'm going to uh, go with. And... Um, uh, we'll see how that how that goes. I think it's a, a pretty conservative approach, and um, uh, I think it'll it'll keep you on the air as long as possible, or as much as possible, while we do this this reconfigure. 
and give us a chance to uh, sort of check things out before we get uh, get things all the way up super high and um, uh, making it hard to make any further adjustments. So it will be. I I have a good feeling about this one. It's going to go fine. That there's you know you, as we talked about, there's a few question marks, but we'll just have to deal with those when we get there. Yeah, that, I'm sure. You know, with any plan like that, it uh, there'll be there'll be some some question marks, absolutely. But uh, yeah, I'm getting uh, uh, I'm getting everything. Uh, I think my plan to put all the tools I have in the back of the Denali, kind of have a workbench back there, and then we'll have uh, 120 volts as well if needed and uh, whatever uh we'll uh you know I'll have that all ready to go so anyway yeah it's uh I'm excited and um we'll uh we'll see what happens but uh it's going to be a huge upgrade here at uh at the station here just just totally uh totally uh looking forward to that let's see I see uh Ken W7KZM is online now so let's uh let's get Ken in here uh Ken go ahead yeah okay um uh, not as strong as usual but i've got you there uh uh ken so you're going to be able to stick around right yes sir uh, i'm on the uh, quest for a laptop battery so i'll just be sitting here uh monitoring both my channel okay all right no problem uh we got you uh uh, just fine. So you are on the list at, uh, what is it, number 21. Okay, we'll talk to you later, thanks. You got it. Mike, uh, KD5NLP, are you uh, by the microphone yet? KD5 NLP, KD5 NLP, uh, are you by the mic yet uh, there, uh, um, Mike? Yeah, WD7R Mike, uh, other Mike, I, I'm not hearing him, um, and I, I have been calling. Yeah, you want me to give him a try? Yeah, please do. All right, let me swing my tent over towards Glendale. Be right back. Uh, this is KD5 NLP. I, got, I can hear you, Mike. Uh, yeah, I'm turned towards Tucson. But, uh, yeah, I'm here live and well. KD5 NLP. Yeah, uh, are you, uh, I've been trying to call you, uh, are you copying me okay? Uh, you're down on the weeds a little bit, Doug. I don't want to come to but, uh, Yeah, okay. Well, I was I was copying you. Okay, we got you on the list now, uh, Mike. Uh, so I do copy you, okay? Okay, sounds good. Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure if you're peaked up on me uh, or not there. But uh, anyways, we got you on the list, Mike. Thanks for checking in. Yeah, you 
Yeah, okay, uh, both of you, Mikes. Uh, thank you for helping out there, uh, Mike, uh, WD7R, Mike. Yeah, okay, let's uh, let's see if we got anybody else out there. Let's see, at 821, uh, anybody else? Kilo 7, Victor, November, Echo. Well, better late than never, uh, K7B&E. Good morning, Vince. Good morning, Doug. Yeah, I just did my Walmart run, just got home, got to put all the groceries away and feed the kids, so probably be one and done, over. Okay, well, uh, appreciate you stopping by. You've been up to uh, uh, any uh, anything going on uh, radio-wise up there? I got a little bit yesterday, but there was a lot of noise. The K index was pretty high. I got a little bit today on 60 meters and 30 meters, and uh, nothing unusual. Got a couple of QSL cards from Rwanda and Timor Leste, so that was kind of cool. But other than that, not much. Okay, well, you're uh, you're staying busy. Uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the dogs are doing fine. Uh, they they're exercising you well. Yeah, especially the new one. He's turned into a somewhat of a fussy eater, and I guess from what I've been reading, uh, huskies are not that's not that unusual for them. But uh, he's still gaining weight, so I guess he's eating enough. I I would imagine uh, they'll. Uh uh, you know, the, the, the if they get picky, uh, you know, they'll they'll get hungry enough at some point. Uh, they'll eat what they got. Yeah, Roger that. Yeah, he does. He just, uh, I, I mean, he's totally different from our labs. I mean, they, I think they would literally eat themselves to death. But he wasn't this way when he was younger. But now he's got a little bit older. He just, but he eats. But he, it's okay. We end up putting a lot of times putting the food in the con, and then he'll play with the con and eat the food out of it. Okay, all right. Yeah, we just had to order uh, another uh, big bag of dog food here. Uh, at, uh, they don't last very long, I'll tell you. No, man, and that stuff, I can't believe it. When we, when we first moved out here, I think a 35-pound 30, at that time bag of dog food was like 35 bucks. Now they're like $80 or more. Uh, that's what, uh, yeah, we order from uh, Chewy's, and, uh, and they bring it. Uh, you know, and it, it, uh, it's gone up a lot. Yep. Yeah. Chewy is good. And they're amazing. I, we order a lot of times we order something and, and it's here the next day. I mean, they got, they got pretty good shipping practices. So got to give them a heads up for that. Yeah. I uh, found that it's really not that much different from, uh, just buying it in the uh, grocery store. And then you don't have to haul that, uh, big old bag around, you know, by the way, the bags used to be 40 pounds. Now they're, you know, whatever, 35, 36 pounds. Yeah. In fact, they've even kind of, now I've noticed they're down to like 28 or 27. I think it's that uh, shrinkflation stuff going on, even with dog food. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely, uh, definitely happening there. All right. Well, uh, you have a good one, Vince, and we'll, uh, we'll catch you next week. All right, man, take care. I didn't think we were going to make our walk this morning because it was raining pretty hard, but then it quit. So I looked at the radar, and you got some pretty good stuff down there, it looked like. We got uh, a good – a lot of guys around uh, Tucson got a fair amount of rain last night. We uh, we got 32 uh, hundredths, and uh, let's see, KD7UUN, Mike, had uh, 45 hundredths, uh, and L had about three feet. <laughs> three feet? Oh, yeah, yeah, Al gets a lot of rain where he's at. Seriously, not three feet, but, you know, I was just, uh, but, uh, yeah, Al, Al definitely gets more than anybody else. Okay, well, we got uh, four, four tenths of an inch here, so I guess you got quite a bit. But uh, the radar looked like you were getting some pretty good storms down there other than just rain, but I guess that wasn't the case. Huh? Well, not, I don't have the local radar up, but we are supposed to get a little more in about four hours, and, uh and then later on tonight after dark. So, uh, yeah, it's not over yet. Okay. Well, that's why we need, like they always say, we need the rain. But, man, the weeds are coming up and, uh, like, gangbusters. But uh, hey, it gives me something to do. <laughs> All right, Doug, I'll catch you later, man. Have a good one, K7B&E. All right, Vince. Uh, you take her easy. And I just see Lee uh, up there in Flagstaff popped up. Uh, Lee, uh, WJ0F, uh, you buy the microphone? Okay, I, I heard someone in there. I'm not sure if it was you, Lee, uh, uh, but uh, 
Uh, somebody's calling. I, I may go back to Phoenix if it's not you. Uh, Lee, WJ0F, uh, go ahead. Oh, I got you now. I got you now, Lee. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, you're good uh, copy. Not as strong as usual, but good copy. Over. <laughs> well, there's half of me, so that's the problem. Uh, I'm going to be in and out this morning. Uh, we got uh, about an inch and a half of snow. <laughs> I heard rain last night about midnight. I wasn't sure what it was going to turn into, but it's all right outside this morning. Over. Oh, man. Wow. Inch and a half of snow. Well, uh, th there it is. Spring just uh, doesn't want to, winter doesn't want to give up, and spring doesn't want to get going quite in, uh, quite yet in Flagstaff. Oh, you bet. Well, it was 60 degrees for a high yesterday, so spring is trying, but, uh, you know, I don't remember, what we'll, about we'll snow in the late April? Uh, it just happens. <laughs> anyway, uh, 73 to you in the net. Uh, next, uh, we're going to turn on the amplifier first. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, that uh, I could hear you in there, but uh, uh, not uh, not a lot. But now you're you're fine, copy with your uh, with your half an antenna. All right, sounds good. Thanks for uh, we got you down as in and out, and uh, we'll catch you next Sunday. Thanks for checking in, Lee. Oh, my. <laughs> Two watts. Uh, well, now that's impressive from Flagstaff. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll have to get out the uh, element and measure it again. But uh, yeah, there's been very much drive on these TEs to work. Anyway, 73, WJ Zura. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Well, at least I could hear you in there. Uh, sounds good. Two watts, QRP at its finest. All right. Hey, Robert, uh, I, it's almost uh, net time. I'm going to run off real quick and uh, freshen up the drinks, and I'll be right back. Roger, Roger. November 7th, Victor Delta. Standing by. Any more check-ins for the Arizona SWAT net? Please call now. WX7G. Hey, there's the caboose. How you doing? I'm doing fine today. Yeah, it's Roger. Very good. Well, we've got you on a lot there, Jim, and I know you'll be here. Sounds good. Or? Roger on that. I'll be here. I'm bringing up the back end. WX-70. No problem. Anyway, uh, anybody else for the Arizona SWAT net, please call now. All right. Well, we'll get things started here uh, now and uh, appreciate everybody who's checked in. Good morning and welcome to the Arizona Sidewinders on 2Net. <clears throat> this net is open to all amateurs and we meet every Sunday morning at 1530 Zulu. And we start taking early check-ins uh, 
an hour or so uh, earlier than that. My name is Doug. I'm K7EME located in southern Arizona running a legal limit to a, uh, a an array in progress uh, covering all of Arizona and into the surrounding states. The purpose of this net is to encourage BHF and higher band activity here in the uh, southwestern part of the U.S. For more information, you can check our website, which is az-swot.net. And uh, Robert, uh, N7BD, has uh, put that uh, site together, and there's a lot of information there uh, about the group. And uh, Robert is also running uh, the NetLogger portion. So uh, online you can uh, monitor the check-in list and uh, send us messages if, if you need it uh, for us to, uh, say, point your way to get you checked in uh, here on 2 Meters. So with that, I'm going to take a quick look around the uh, compass. We'll see if we've got anybody else out there. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll begin out to the uh, west <coughs> and, uh, and northwest. K7 EME for the Arizona SWATnet. K7 Golf Zulu Bravo. K7, uh, I missed the uh, something Bravo. Golf Zulu Bravo. Yeah, K7 Golf Zulu Bravo. Uh, good morning, and uh, I, if you've checked in before, I apologize. I do not remember your name. Uh, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, no, uh, first check-in. Uh, name here, Gene. Golf Echo and a Bember Echo. And uh, we are in Pitcher Rock. Okay, well, welcome. Uh, so am I, Gene, uh, out here in uh, good old Picture Rocks. K7 Golf Zulu Bravo, welcome. Uh, you'll have to tell us about your station, and uh, since you're new to the net, we... Uh, we have you down here, number 26 on the uh, rotation, so it'll be a little while before uh, we can get back uh, to you. Are you going to be able to stick around that long? Uh, yeah, I'll we'll give it a try. Uh, might be in and out making breakfast or something, but uh, yeah, I'll stand by. Okay, appreciate it. Uh, welcome aboard. Uh, let's see, anybody else out there to the west and northwest? Hey, good morning, Gene, NJ60. Yeah, Serge. Uh, KT6KT, KT6KT, sorry guys, uh, K7EME, good signal, uh, Serge, go over. K7EME from KT6KT, good morning, Doug, Hello. there we go, have a good day, sir, so K7EME from KT6KT, DM26, clear. Oh, beautiful copy out of Las Vegas there, uh, excellent, excellent, uh, Serge, uh, great copy, S5 to S6, uh, let me put it over to Chuck. I bet he'll uh, want to work you there. Over. Okay. Yeah, KT6, KT, KT6, KT, November, Juliet 6, Delta, NJ60. Good copy this morning, sir. Chow, copy. Over, over. NJ60 from KT6, KT, right at the north, Chuck. But I can tell you're in there. Over. Yeah, Roger, uh, Serge, thanks a lot. Uh, good good pathway uh, today out to uh, Las Vegas there. KT6KT, NJ60. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Al, uh, are you copying uh, Serge? Al, are you around uh, the microphone? Okay, uh, stand by, Serge. Let's see. Anybody up in Phoenix uh, got a copy on Serge? Want to give him a try? Okay, Serge, that's all we got for today, but thanks for uh, checking in. Did you get any uh, weather up there in Las Vegas? We've had some rain around here uh, yes, last night. Hey, there was a double dog. There's another station trying to call, uh, Serge. Okay, okay. Uh, was there another station calling, uh, Serge? Yeah, 
I think he's still talking to the other station. Okay. Are you done there, Serge? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Okay. All right. Uh, I wasn't sure if you were done with the other station. <clears throat> okay. Well, uh, sorry about that local noise. Uh, we got a... Boy, I wish uh, I wish you didn't have that. I'm I'm sure you could work a lot more of the guys. Uh, yeah, problem is at my end, but I do hear a lot of voices in there. Yeah, I'll tell you what. This has been the best uh, path we've had in quite some time. Uh, definitely, uh, you're you're quite strong and a hundred percent copy, Serge. And that was all I think. Just yeah, uh, Mike, were you wanting to try? No, you got IXA and they're trying to check in. I'm not sure if you hear Serge. Okay, all right, thanks for that. 73, Serge, seven threes. Uh, you take care. Thanks for checking in. KT6KT, KT6KT, W7IXA, any copy over? Okay, anybody else uh, wanting to try with uh, Serge up there? Okay, I think we got them all, Serge. Okay, seven threes, thank you much. And uh, uh, let's see, Doug, uh, W7IXA, congratulations on that, and uh, good morning to you. Yeah, good morning. Thanks so much. Yeah, nice to have me in 26. I, I may already have it, but I didn't think I did. And I hear it's just a very chance for that kind of a, a ground uh, path. I thought that Mike was uh, spinning around, and there he was, spinning very well. He's about five and six here. Yeah, that uh, he was running a solid five and six with very little QSB this morning uh, down here as well. And uh, I haven't, the, the conditions are just really, really good this morning. Uh, haven't heard him that strong without QSB for quite some time. Anyway, uh, you'll, you'll be in and out, is that right? You, uh, that's right uh, there, Doug, right? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks. I appreciate the time. Yeah, no worries. Anytime, anytime. Uh, let's see. Let me get back on track here. I think we need to uh, check a couple more compass points, but we'll... Uh, uh, we'll look up to the north with conditions the way they are. Who knows who might uh, come in? K7 EME looking north. And K7 EME looking to the east. K7 Echo, Mike Echo. And looking out to the southeast. K7 EME.
All right. Well, a bunch of you guys uh, got to uh, talk to Serge there. So that that was really terrific. So with that, uh, just a couple things here uh, to mention. Um, again, uh, the two meter, uh, the rest of the array is coming down next Friday. Uh, we'll have uh, hopefully uh, one, the, the rebuilt uh, antenna will be back up at a lower position just temporarily. Um, we're going to play it by ear and see how that's going to be. A lot of, lot of things to do with Chuck uh, 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 doing the choreography there, and uh, we'll try to be on the air as much as possible. But um, <clears throat> So I will be on the net with uh, some sort of antenna, barring anything unforeseen, uh, next uh, Sunday. Uh, after that, the Sunday after that, we're, I'm going to have... Uh, We'll, we'll have Al filling in uh, for net control with uh, Steve. Uh, Robert's going to be gone uh, as well. Uh, Steve can do uh, net logger, and Chuck uh, can do the live stream there, or a combination of all the above. I know you guys will, will handle it just fine, so uh, that's in two weeks from today. Uh, I'll, I may be able to check in. Hopefully, um, Robert and I will be back from Kansas City somewhere uh, and able to uh, t at least check in. Anyways, uh, DeVry Hamfest, I believe, is April 6th. Is that right? Or something like that. Coming up, uh, we'll not be able to attend that. But uh, sorry, we're going to miss that. But um, if anybody comes across an FT902 DM, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll be very, 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 very interested. Anyway, so going to miss that Hamfest. With that, we'll get things rolling here and. Uh, uh, go up to Robert. So, Robert, uh, N7VD, go ahead. Okay, very good. Uh, K7EME in the SWAT. Uh, this is November 7, Victor Delta. Robert over here in Northeast Mesa, SWAT number 3051. Anyway, yes, uh, we'll be taking off uh, tomorrow. We're flying out tomorrow. We're coming back on Saturday to uh, get my dad prepped for the move, and then uh, we'll come back and uh, dump the truck on Tuesday and drive up there two days up, two days back with a stop in Amarillo. So uh, we have a day to at least uh, pack the trailer and get him ready. Got to sell his car, got to uh, you know turn off stuff and get him prepped for it. So lots of stuff going on. Anyway, uh, the other thing is we got the SWAT banner, got it up uh, and uh, uh, we'll have uh, pass it around for the next uh, for so you guys will have uh, a place to uh, gather there. Also, the picture we took at the last ham fest, Scottsdale, is posted up on the uh, website under news. So uh, you guys can uh, check it out there, see who you can spot. Anyway, that's about it. Back to that. Uh, K7EME and 7B. Yeah, and the banner looks awesome. Uh, Robert sent me a picture of that. I forgot to mention that. I'm sorry I didn't, uh, but thanks for reminding me. Uh, so we have a nice banner. Marty was uh, holding that up, and uh, beautiful. Uh, it came out really, really well. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll officially be uh, sort of... Uh, um, on the on the map at Hamfests with our uh, with our uh, banner. So I guess, I guess we're a real uh, group now. We're official. Anyways, um, thank you for uh, taking care of that, Robert. As well, appreciate that uh, the work you uh, put into that with the graphics. Uh, Al K seven ZYP, you're next. Go ahead, Al. Good morning, Doug in the net K seven ZYP. Um, yeah. I'm not sure where my antenna is pointed because I uh, had it pointed up towards the, uh, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> Surge up there in Las Vegas. Had a good copy on him. Sorry I didn't uh, give him a call back. But uh, anyway, um, um, yep, lots of rain last night. Uh, just shy of three quarters of an inch here. Uh, 3,500 foot elevation. And, um, uh, let's see. I did hear it start up last evening. I heard the storm come in and it started knocking stuff over and quite a lot of wind and whatnot. Um, yeah, 
Uh, yeah, DeVry is next Saturday, next Saturday, Doug, the 30th. And I will not be going to that one, as you won't. And, um, yep. So, trying to keep all this stuff in, in my head, keep it straight in my head, so don't miss anything. Anyway, um, that's about all I've got. Got a pretty good list going there so far. I think, what, 27, 28, something like that. I'll check here in just a second. Anyway, I uh, uh, look forward to uh, 36.95 tonight. And uh, we'll catch you later. K7ZYP, everybody have a good day. Well, thanks for the update on the uh, the. I did not realize that it was then. Well, I may be able to go up there then for that uh, ham fest. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe Chuck will have to get together about that and see uh, see about a trip up there. Uh, sounds good. Thanks on all there, uh, Al. And uh, as usual, you got the uh, prize for the most uh, the most rain uh, reported. Uh, let's see. Let's hop over to Steve N seven T H W. Uh, Steve, um, sounds like you've been busy getting uh, that uh, beautiful t uh, Gonset uh, two meter AM rig uh, coming to life. So uh, tell us about that and whatever else you got going on. K seven AME and the group N seven T H W. Steve and uh, East Mesa slot number thirty six sixty three. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to be known as uh, Mr. Boat Anchor, but yeah, I have been uh, playing around and getting it. got the receive going well, and uh, while the tubes light up, I just can't transmit until I get a crystal or a VFO. So, uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, uh, I'm supposed to get the crystal this week, and it's uh, going to be on uh, general SSB band, so uh, it uh, won't bother any of the repeaters. So, anyway, I'll, I'll get you that info on that crystal, Doug. And actually, Chuck, I am most impressed from that QRP Labs uh, thing. I, I want to do that. I want to do that for sure because I don't want to rely on these crystal people with left of them uh, out there. So I need to talk to you about that. I'm not going to DeVry this week. Janet has more uh, another more critical uh, procedure on Friday afternoon. So I just need to be around uh, closer. I don't want to um, take the time off uh, the day after, morning after. So. Anyway, uh, what else do I have? Not much else going on. Oh, by the way, you're up to 10 on a live stream, uh, Doug. <laughs> now you're down to about 7, but, you know, it fluctuates. And uh, Chuck, you were up to 3 at one time, I think. And uh, anyway, it was up and down, so all together, a good dozen plus probably. So all of those sounding good from this end here. So I'll keep you all posted And what's going on. Light rain outside right now. Just a beautiful day to sit in and uh, do nothing. <laughs> K7EME in the group. N7THW73. Back to net. All right. <clears throat> well, uh, Steve, thanks for monitoring that. I uh, uh, We appreciate it. And uh, 13 uh, folks listening to the live stream, that that means uh, there's there's 13 folks out there that can hear everybody, and that, uh, that's what it's all about. Well, good luck uh, to Janet with uh, her her uh, continued uh, um, saga with uh, with her issues there, and uh, hope everything uh, uh, improves and keeps improving. Uh, so uh, understand uh, that you're going to be uh, tied up there with taking care of Mama there. So I totally understand that. Uh, Chuck, you're next. NJ6D, uh, over to you. All right, Doug, K7EME in the group, NJ6D. Uh, first, welcome to Gene, K7GZB. Uh, Doug, Gene and I are longtime friends. We've known each other for, well, several decades now. And uh, we were at a party last night, and I said, hey, he was, we were talking VHF, UHF stuff, and I said, you got to get on this net because he's, he's looking for uh, – Kind folk that have uh, like-minded folk uh, on uh, on the uh, the radio waves here. So this is a good group. So he's uh, your neighbor. He's probably uh, maybe two blocks away. He's vertically polarized at the moment, but uh, we'll 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 correct that. We'll get him uh, straight and narrow or horizontal. Anyway, uh, let's see. My one announcement is uh, for the the whole group is. Uh, 
in uh, the spirit of carrying on the tradition of Barry V4MA, I've been uh, trying to do some organizational stuff for the next uh, Arizona Microwave Activity Day. And because the uh, 6th of April, the first Saturday, conflicts with the Arizona, the Radio Society of Arizona uh, swap meet, uh, we're, we're going to schedule that for the 13th of April. So those of you that uh, like to uh, or want to play around with um, uh, microwave stuff, um, uh, take note of the date. Uh, if you want to get on uh, the distribution of the spreadsheet that I'm putting together, just shoot, shoot me an email. My uh, use the QRZ email, and because uh, if you don't even have a rig and you want to tag along with somebody who's going out and about, um, the 13th would be a good day to do that. I personally will be up on the road uh, going to Kitt Peak, not all the way to the top because that's radio restricted because of the radio observatories, but just below that there's a really nice place. I think Doug might be coming along with me, and um, so we'll have our 10 gig rig uh, going on with that. Speaking of 10 gigs, uh, Robert and I had another really great QSO uh, the other night uh, off of uh, bouncing our signals off the Catalina Mountains. Uh, both of us, uh, S9 signals going both directions and uh, really amazing. Uh, just armchair copy, uh, they're really uh, pretty cool. So um, I was really happy with that. And there's just a whole laundry list of uh, 10 gig related stuff that I've been working on. So uh, Troy and I uh, have been playing around with oscillators and frequency. And uh, Steve, that's where we came. Troy came up with that. So credit Troy for discovering that little programmable uh, crystal thingy, my Bob. And so Troy and I are going to plan a, um, a bench day up at his place to do some uh, testing and uh, calibrating and whatnot. So that'll be fun. Uh, let's see. Doug's tube meter project is <clears throat> on the now uh, pretty much on the front burner, and I've got a plan. Uh, I think I got to jot it down so and share it with Doug so he knows what's going on. But uh, I think uh, we're ready to go. We're ready to pull the trigger, and uh, we'll get his uh, stacked uh, array uh, back up and running here before too long. And let's see, you've heard me report in the past about struggle with my six meter setup. I think I finally got that cured. And uh, with a bad uh, connection up there on the tower and the feed line. So we're back to full power on the uh, the big Yagi and uh, looking forward to some E scatter and tropo openings. And who knows, maybe we get lucky on the cycle here and um, get enough flux for F2. Um, that's about it, Doug. I think that's plenty for uh, one one round there. So uh, back to you, uh, Doug. K7 EME in the group, NJ60. Well, that's uh, that's a lot of lot of stuff in there, uh, uh, but a uh, lot of lot of great stuff. And yeah, on the 13th, I I would like to uh, tag along on uh, 10 gigs. And um, um, at least vicariously uh, check in, but uh, yeah, I uh, and I've definitely been thinking about the uh, the uh, offer you made about uh, your your spare components and uh, perhaps uh, turning that into a, a ten gig transverter for myself. And I would love that project, so uh, I will uh, be happy to relieve you of. Uh, of uh whatever uh, extra components you uh, you have over there and uh, um buy those and and uh make my own rather than uh, buying a uh, uh an all uh, all all in one unit so that's uh, I'm looking forward to that as well uh let's see we've got uh, uh Dan N9 Oscar Bravo Bravo in there and I'm where I'm aimed right now uh, L can you go ahead and uh, and get uh, uh, Dan uh, in here uh, relayed, please. Sure. Dan 9 obb N9 obb K7ZYP, relaying for the Arizona SWAT net. Go ahead, Dan.
Okay, Dan, very good. Well, um, yeah, that's a kick in the pants that you get to listen to us when you're back there in Illinois. And uh, I'm glad, glad we were able to do that for you. Um, that's, uh, I don't know. I, I, I just can't believe how, how much this uh, net's come along. Anyway, um, okay, good to hear from you this morning. And stay out of that hospital. Stay out of that hospital. But if you need to go, please go. <laughs> okay, Dan, we'll, we'll catch you later on. Uh, 7-3 for now. Uh, back to you there, Doug. All right. Uh, thank you for relaying that. I could sort of hear uh, Dan in there, but unless I get my antenna cranked all the way around over there, uh, it's uh, it's a bit tough with uh, all the uh, uh, the Tucson mountains in the way. Anyways, appreciate it. And uh, let's see. Next is uh, we'll get our solar report of the week in here. W5RCQ, Jerry, go ahead. K7EME and Group, W5RCQ, Jerry, and Sun City, slot number 3662. Well, it's been an interesting week uh, on the sun. <clears throat> right now, there are seven groups of spots. Uh, sun spot number is 146, which is uh, not 200, but it's getting up there. And so, if you're wanting to play with 10 and 12 meters, now is the time. Uh, the 10.7 centimeter number is 209. And uh, there is a solar storm underway right now. We're being uh, uh, covered with protons and, and hopefully uh, Jason, uh, as he's flying around up there uh, in, in the uh, high atmosphere, has got his uh, tinfoil hat on. Uh, he's probably getting a pretty good dose right now. Uh, there is a big CME coming probably tomorrow. And there's a huge sunspot, 3615, right in the middle of the sun, that uh, you can easily see, not with the naked eye, but with some kind of um, protective glasses on, it's easily visible. So uh, it was the uh, one that uh, loosened the big uh, class player here uh, yesterday, and there's going to be more to come from it, I'm sure. It's uh, a really big, scattered out, uh, odd looking sunspot, so who knows what else we're going to get from it. Alrighty, um, I guess everybody's reminded that DeVry is Saturday. I will be there with some extra chairs and so forth. If you need a place to sit, come on by. And um, I guess everybody noticed that Andy's big signal wasn't here today. I got a uh, note from Andy. He's been in the hospital for three days. He's out now, so uh, hopefully he's doing well. So uh, thoughts and prayers to Andy and uh, his speedy recovery. So with that, back to Ned, K7EME, W5RCQ. Okay, very good. And, uh, yeah, I hope uh, Andy is uh, is doing all right. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and uh, a, a quick comment on the, uh, did you say the, the uh, uh, solar flux is 209, is that right? That's the 10.7 centimeter number. The, the solar or the sunspot number is 146. Yeah, I haven't, uh, I haven't seen that uh, number up that high for a while, so that's pretty good. So, uh, guys, get out there. Lots of interesting stuff going to be happening on uh, the bands. And 209, uh, that could be tickling uh, F2 uh, propagation on 6 meters. So those of you uh, who have 6 meters might, uh, might want to monitor, uh, you know, like the FT8 uh, frequencies, see what, uh, what's coming in, or monitor uh, DX maps in case you're... Uh, interested in maybe uh, some sideband openings up there. <clears throat> so that's uh, that's to be uh, determined down the road. Let's see. Let's switch uh, over to KD7UUN and Mike over here in uh, across the way in uh, Tucson. Go ahead, Mike. Okay, Doug. Well, good morning to everybody. Uh, nice, cool, breezy morning here. Just a nice... Uh, Shower last night, actually a pretty good storm about 3 o'clock this morning, so uh, it's got just close just under half an inch here, so um, quite a bit of wind, but everything seems to be in pretty good shape, uh, so I'm glad about that. 
But I did notice uh, when I was looking at the radar just a little while ago that uh, there was about 2,000 people in uh, western Pima County without power this morning. Most of them are APS customers, uh, although some of them are uh, also uh, Trico uh, and a few SSEC. So, um, so they must have done some, uh, some damage in that area, I guess. So. Anyway, um, not too much going on here other than that. So working on the garden and getting things uh, ready for spring and uh, um, putting in water lines and uh, drip systems and all that. All that stuff that's uh, a lot of fun to do and, and uh, um, takes some time. So anyway, uh, that's it for me. Back to you, k 70 me KD7, UUN. Okay, very good. Well, um, yeah, there must have been... Uh some winds or something to uh, knock out uh, knock out power. So uh, so there we go. Um, just uh, just so interesting to see this this uh, happening uh, this late in the in the, uh, <clears throat> the well early spring. Uh, usually usually we're uh, we're kind of going into a dry stretch uh, here, and we're still getting rain. Not complaining. Not complaining at all. Uh, let's see, Ron, um, KW7RNX, uh, it's your turn. Go ahead, Ron. I have talked to a little bit of the uh, GMRF guys and uh, trying to drum up business for the uh, handcuffs uh, coming up here in Tucson on the 6th. Uh, sounds like there are some, uh, including some of the governing bodies that are going to be there and uh, our hands, uh, one of which uh, was very interested in the uh, uh, five lines of the so I pointed into the uh, the website and uh, what time we get uh, rolling and he's going to look at it hopefully today. So other than that, uh, I'm doing in a dog city for uh, relatives that are in town from uh, Colorado and out at the uh, Desert Museum, museum getting uh, kind of blown around today. So other than that, uh, not much more. We did get some rain over here. Uh, uh, was wet when I went out for the paper this morning. So, uh, uh, Okay, uh, excellent there, uh, Ron, and uh, thank you for uh, for drumming up uh, more folks for us to uh, to join the net. Always uh, looking for new fe new people, and uh, uh, I appreciate uh, the cheerleading effort there. So thank you much. You have a you have a good uh, rest of your day today. Uh, Jim, N6CAZ, you're next. Uh, Jim, uh, how's things uh, down in Vail? Hey, Doug, and uh, good morning to everybody on the net. Yeah, well, got a little wet last night. <laughs> uh, I think there was a second wave that came in like around 5.30, 6 o'clock, and uh, it's going to be clearing up a bit out here now. Wow. Uh, gosh, well, I got some other kind of news uh, here this week. Um, the uh, the AC saw to continue. Um, I don't know if anybody else saw it, but on QOZ last week there was an FC 736R listed. Uh, the seller was in California and kind of expressed that he didn't really want to ship it, but uh, um, I decided to send him an email anyway and uh, didn't get a response, which was kind of weird after a full day. And I looked at the listing again that night, and I was like, gosh, it's still listed for sale, but he never responded to me. Usually people at least send a quick message and say, hey, sorry, it's sold or whatever. Uh, so I thought about it, and I thought, well, you know, I've had occasionally a head issue with Gmail not getting through. So I used my Yahoo account, sent a message, and I got a response in like two minutes. Uh, so we had a long phone conversation with this guy, probably more than I've ever done before buying a radio. And uh, we worked out a deal. So uh, I'm getting a 736R complete with 220 and 1.2 gig. Uh, as far as I know, it's got the CW filter and all the other goodies in it. And as a bonus, he's got the original owner's manual and the AC desk mic. So I could not pass that up. That was just a sweet deal. So 
we got that all taken care of. Uh, it's on the way. It should be here Tuesday. So I'm uh, kind of excited about that. Uh, we had an interesting conversation uh, just talking about our various radios over the years. We have a lot of the same stuff on our bench, which is kind of interesting. So that was kind of fun. Uh, good exchange. Good to know that, uh, you know, he, he wanted to know that it was going to somebody that was going to make use of it. And uh, it just it overall worked out really well. So I'll officially have uh, one way or the other, either through mine or through this one, have the rig with 220 in it ready to go. Uh, <laughs> the transmitter is fun, but it does a lot of drifting, so it's kind of uh, nice to have something in a dedicated rig. But uh, other than that, busy work week, uh, lots of weird stuff going on there, um, all kinds of things going on. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it is what it is. But oh, looks like the sun's coming out here, so I'm welcoming that too. Uh, it's kind of a weird night. So not a lot else going on here. Uh, keeping the dog busy with playing with one hand and didn't get the mic, uh, mic button first with the other. So <laughs> that's my Sunday. But anyway, uh, good hearing everybody in there today. Uh, band's nice and quiet. Sounds good. Oh, and uh, last thing, I turned on the HF radio last night and was going to go listen to the 6-meter AM net. And I uh, got home in time, turned the radio on, and I was kind of, it's the only time I used the memories on the radio. And I was going through, and as I passed the 10 meter repeater band, uh, the repeater stairs, um, two of the five frequencies were active. And I think I caught part of a, a repeater call sign, it was like an N2 something. And I thought, wow, I don't remember the last time I ever heard activity on 10 meter repeaters. Uh, so that was kind of like a weird thing. It was kind of late in the evening, too, so that was kind of interesting. But it uh, sounds like that might actually be playing into what's going on right now. So it looks like it might be a good ham operating day. So uh, looking forward to checking that out a bit. Uh, so with that, uh, back to the net. There you go, guys. Uh, 60 easy. Excellent on the uh, 736R. <clears throat> was that the one that I, I mentioned uh, during the week that was, uh, was out there with all four, uh, all four bands? It might have been. I mean, it was on QRZ. Uh, I caught it. I think. I think it was like Wednesday or Thursday night before I went to bed, and I thought, "Oh gosh, that's going to sell fast." And then I thought, "Well, yeah, he's only looking for local pickups, so unless somebody happens to be in LA that's looking at that, you know, it might it might take longer." And uh, so I shot him an email, and um, by the next morning, it was already a couple pages down. All the bunch of new stuff had come in on Friday. And it just knocked it off the, the main page, so you had to go searching for it a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I don't know if you had mentioned it during the week or not, but that's the one. That's, that's it. I don't think there were any others up there this week. So, uh, yeah, 1.2 gig, 220. Um, he had the desk mic manual. Uh, he had, a, like, a purple-colored Post-it note, because I guess they got a new policy now where you got to handwrite your call sign and put it in the photo. Uh, so he had to edit the photo and put that in. Uh, but yeah, he's got a bunch of pictures of it, and you know, it looks in pretty good shape for its age. So uh, you know, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, I saw one. Uh, I'm not sure where it was at. It may have been on eBay. Uh, that was for sale with all bands uh, there, and uh, it was at a really good price for that. And um, I, uh, I think I mentioned on Mike's uh, group on Tuesday night that it that. that I had seen that if anybody was uh, was interested because um yeah that uh <laughs> that, I'm glad you got that because uh now you can get on 1296 so uh so we're we're uh, we're going to start working on you uh for uh for those the, the another new band as well. <laughs> anyway, congratulations on that. I'm glad you uh you hit a home run there. With that, and speaking of Mike and his uh, Tuesday net, let's go to my WD7R. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, was there somebody else in there, Doug? I, I thought I heard something. I did not. Uh, anybody else out there? Uh, nothing here. Okay, didn't want to step on anybody. Uh, you know, it could have been band noise or something. I thought I heard a voice, but uh, I hear voices. Uh, just kidding. WD7R, hey, uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, good to hear everybody. Uh, I tell you, this weather has been very interesting here, flip-floppy, uh, back and forth. Uh, 
you know, uh, yesterday was really nice, uh, uh, low 80s up here, and then it got cold and windy and a little rain last night. So uh, today we're looking at clouds and, and rain and, and another uh, uh, mid-60s days here. So uh, uh, I'd say decent antenna building weather, maybe with a light jacket or something. But, uh, yeah, uh, Doug, I'm curious. Uh, I wonder what everybody's going to do with their tax refund money. Uh, maybe spend it on a new antenna or a radio gear, uh, transverter, who knows? But um, uh, not me. Um, I, I owe a little bit this year, uh, unfortunately. So uh, <laughs> no refund here. But uh, we'll see everybody tonight on 3695, uh, uh, you know, about 6 p.m. or so. Looking forward to that. And uh, good to hear uh, Chuck is back and uh, more about his uh, adventures down in uh, Chile with the uh, Rubin Observatory. And uh, very interesting stats on that, that big mirror that uh, they installed. Wow. Uh, pretty impressive. Of, um, uh, feed there. So, and Doug, I'm excited about your uh, your station rebuild uh, and uh, uh, hearing hearing that big signal again. Although you're you're making do, it's working quite well with what you got there. So, uh, keep up the good work, all, and uh, have a great Sunday. WD7R back to net control. Okay, Mike. Uh, it uh, I'm looking forward to it as well. Boy, it's going to be nice uh, to be back uh, back where we were a few years ago. Uh, and uh, fine on uh, uh, on everything. You guys can catch Mike on Tuesday nights, seven uh, o'clock, and uh, uh, this frequency. And join uh, join the roundtable. It's a little bit uh, uh, more open style, uh, not quite so uh, not not quite so rigid, and um, more rag chewing uh, available there. So uh, check that out. Uh, let's see. W seven WHB. Steve, you're next on the uh, in the batter's cage. Go ahead. All righty, Doug. Well, we are in the batter's cage. We're ready to swing. So there we go. It's my Sunday morning. This is Steve at Whiskey Seven Whiskey Hotel, Bravo and Gilbert, Arizona. Squat number three six nine seven, and we're doing real good today. Uh, we've had a busy week. Busy, busy week, as a matter of fact. So, uh, lots going on, and I uh, got the uh, was, have been working on the uh, newly purchased travel trailer to get it ready for the summer months of uh, camping and uh, amateur radio at the same time. So, we're looking forward to that. Um, Oh my goodness, we got pulled over by the police day before yesterday. It's like uh, I wasn't speeding, I used my turn signals, I'm going, what is this about? Uh, I don't carry drugs, what's the deal? And uh, pulled off on the side of the road, the officer come up and asked me if I knew why I was being stopped. I said, I have no idea. He said, well, your license is expired. <laughs> my tag and I said no it's not and uh, he said well let me see your registration so I reached from the registration and as soon as I looked at it I'm going oh duh I'm a five weeks late and uh, kind of kicked off at DMV about that because they usually send out a notice for when it's due but I didn't get one and uh, so uh, Friday we went in, uh, to the DMV and uh, oh before Friday I uh, <laughs> I told the cop, or he was telling me about, the, you know, people and driver's license being expired and tags being expired. And I said, well, you know, thank you for doing your job. It's real great. And uh, he said, all right, get out of here. This, this is just a warning. So <laughs> maybe the compliment helped me not get a ticket. But uh, we got it squared away, and uh, we're all set and good to go now. And we are ready for next weekend at DeVry. So I hope to see a lot of you there. And uh, we're not looking forward to the, the sun activity that's coming up because, uh, uh, gosh, that affects my Ken 10 stuff that I do during the, each work, each day. Uh, so it's, uh, propagation's already been kind of up and down on 10 meters for the last two weeks. And uh, it's been rough. It's been good, but it's been rough. And uh, I imagine the CME or, you know, one of these gigantic X players will kind of make it worse. So. We'll try to make the best of it. It's good to hear everybody in there. We did hear third. I was going to try to get back to him, but uh, I was busy cooking breakfast at the time. So that's all I've got for right now, Doug. And uh, good to hear everybody on the net. K87 EME. This is W7 WHB. 
Okay, well, good on all of the above, uh, including uh, getting uh, getting pulled over. I uh, uh, never never a good uh, a good feeling when you got the uh, the old red and blue uh, flashing lights in the uh, rearview mirror there. But uh, sounds like uh, you know innocent enough, and uh, uh, you got her taken care of. So <laughs> that's one of those kind of details that. If they don't tell you, you know, I know mine are due in like September or something. So, uh, uh, you know, I usually think of it, but then, uh, you know, you got to drive down to the emissions people and you put it off. And if it, if it wasn't for that, you know, I'd, I'd be right on it. But anyways, um, yeah, uh, understand. All right. Well, Jim, W780F, you are next, and uh, let's see how your uh, your week has gone there. Go ahead, Jim. Well, good morning, uh, Doug. k 7 EME and the group is W780F, Northeast Scottsdale, Rio Verde, Foothills. Uh, yeah, going pretty good. I had a little trouble this morning. I turned on the radio, and I barely hear you, so I knew something was up. And uh, come to find out, uh, through a little investigation here, uh, my uh, antenna switch uh, deal that I have hooked up to this, this and a uh, uh, 51A uh, was uh, acting up. So I uh, got, swept, got that swapped out, so we're back in business there. Uh, yesterday, uh, I set up a, a radio, a new radio stack for me that was given to me by WD7R back when I retired from the FAA, uh, a Yesu uh, uh, 757 GX2, along with the automatic tuner and the, and the power supply, and uh, hooked it all up. And uh, man, that's a sweet little unit. Uh, I'm really, uh, really impressed with it. Uh, so I got that all going, and I may use it as a backup or uh, maybe field day or something like that. Uh, got about a half inch rain last night, so uh, we're doing good there. We got, uh, let's see, it's total a little over six inches of uh, rain for the year, so we're doing real well here. Uh, so everything else is good. Uh, did a little yard work, blocking some weeds. Uh, they're growing like weeds do, and uh, got some of them eliminated yesterday. So that's about it from here. Back to you, Doug T7 EME in the group, Doug T7 ATF. Okay, Jim. Yeah, that uh, I had that lineup with the auto tuner and everything uh, uh, back in about 1981 or 82 or something like that. I I had that and um, I loved that little radio. That was a fun. Uh, a, it was my first, uh, uh, you know, solid state uh, radio, and um, so that was that was the beginning of. Uh, of my transition from tubes, but I never did uh, finish that transition. I still, I still got a two, a few tube radios laying around. But uh, anyway, that uh, you'll enjoy that. That I, I made a lot of contacts with that uh, little uh, setup there. So uh, I think you'll, uh, you'll have fun with that for sure. Um, let's see. Next on the list, ND7E up in Catalina. So Mike, uh, take it away. Well, good morning, Doug, and everyone in the group. Uh, yeah, I woke up this morning to a uh, thunderstorm about 3 o'clock in the morning. So, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was a part of the experience as well. Anyway, just kind of doing not much, tinkering around with a breadboard kit here. I got a book on learning circuits, and so kind of tinkering around with that. And uh, anyway, I'm sure everybody's familiar with the uh, Elliott Electronics down here in South Tucson, the people that live around here. I was in there, oh, first time probably about a year ago and was pretty fascinated with all the old uh, antique stuff they have. And, of course, it's kind of an electronic store, and then they've got a kind of a uh, boneyard of old aircraft stuff, too, in another part of the place, and along with other fascinating electronics. Anyway, tinkering around with that a little bit, uh, not much else. Went out and did a photo activation at Catalina State Park and got a contact from Portugal and one from Sweden on 15 meters. So I'm taking part of the uh, HF activities and I'll look for, see if anything's on six meters coming up and see if I can uh, get on that. That's uh, always fascinating. Anyway, that's about it. I'll throw it back to you, Doug, and have a good day, everyone. This is ND70. Okay, Mike. Uh, yeah, very good. Uh, 
you're uh, you're doing a lot of those uh, <coughs> uh, activations. I know you have a lot of fun uh, doing that, and that's quite a popular uh, activity. I know Ken uh, W7KZM does that as well. Um, and question for you: uh, Are there a lot of uh, wildflowers? I've heard uh, Catalina State Park. Uh, uh, something about it. My wife actually heard. Uh, are there quite a bunch of uh, wildflowers this uh, uh, this past week? Oh, well, I don't think yet. Uh, they're starting to spring up. I noticed that here on my property too, a little bit. So, uh, yeah, I think that's going to be. I'll have to check again here in a week and see how that's going. Yeah. Okay. I just was curious if you had any uh, any reports on that. All right. Well, thanks, Mike. Uh, Lynn, um, uh, K7HAM, you are next. Okay. K K7EME in the group. K7HM, Lynn and Gilbert. Well, I had a pretty quiet week. I didn't get to have any fun like Steve did, but uh, I'm glad he got everything taken care of. And uh, I went to the uh, Arizona Game and Fish Outdoor Expo yesterday. That was kind of cool. Um, a lot of vendors, a lot of uh, organizations, um, thankfully a lot of life if you're into reptiles and stuff. <laughs> um, fishing, oh no, it's getting really, really, really a good sale. And uh, it goes on again today. And uh, it's, uh, the nice thing is free parking and free admission. So it was kind of, it was, it was I don't know, it was, it's got the Ben Avery range and it was pretty much covered the whole place. It was uh, a lot of walking. Other than that, uh, I'm glad uh, everybody's doing fine, and uh, we don't really have anything else, so we'll pass it back there to you, Deb. k 7 and e Oh, wait, uh, Robert, take a big cooler, and we'll, uh, we'll give you orders for barbecue on your way to Kansas City on the way back. So back to you, Deb. k 7 e and k 7 hm Yeah, any comment there, Robert? Yeah, he's he's going to be a busy guy here. Um, yeah, that a uh, lot of stuff to do up there, but uh, a good idea nonetheless. There, uh, Lynn. Let's see. Let's switch over to Peoria and John uh, WB Seven DYU. John, uh, go ahead. What do you uh, what you got going on up there? Uh, I was having a pretty uh, good month, Monday uh, week. You know, yesterday I was just getting ready to go out of the house. I called from my uh, meeting for a meeting that I'm supposed to down on a free day. So when I get over there, it's, uh, I'm thinking that it's going to be really probably the spark plug wire. And then uh, actually, the spark plug has been uh, shot out of the block. So uh, we worked on it for about four hours trying to take care of it. Uh, actually, have a friend and son to the block got a bad hit. And for that, uh, had a fairly decent week. We uh, got as excited to come and got as boring as other people. So, uh, it was a good And, uh, Love to hear from what other people got going. So uh, I'll uh, turn it back to you, Mr. WB7 DYU. Okay, uh, John. Well, I'm had. I'm glad you had a decent week and uh, and uh, keeping busy up there. And uh, maybe uh, maybe we'll see you at the Devry uh, Hamfest uh, after all here. Um, if I uh, still able to uh, go up and and see that, so sounds good. Let's see, N seven LPD, Robert, uh, you are next. Uh, go ahead, Robert. Okay, thank you, Doug. That's Robert N seven LPD, spot number thirty six ninety three in Gilbert. Uh, wow. Let's see, so many different conversations today, and a, a lot of interesting subjects. One I was curious about, and uh, this is a question for when I unkey, is you guys were talking about operating AM on two meters, and I'm curious if 
there's a net uh, set up or if it's impromptu, uh, organized or whatever. But uh, yeah, it's kind of an interesting thing. And the other is, yeah, I hear a lot of talk about 10 gigahertz. I'd, my wife and I both talked about that before. Uh, certainly cannot afford that new ICOM, but uh, anyways, uh, interested maybe someday of getting into 10 gig myself. Other than that, uh, not much new around here. Same thing with uh, trying to keep the jungle under control from the rain and got more last night. Uh, I'm kind of surprised to see the forecast is for more later in the week. Uh, anyway, I hope I can stay ahead of it. Uh, other than that, just trying to get my shop insulated before it gets hot. So. That's it on this end, Doug. Uh, if you could let me know something about that AM on two meters, I'd appreciate it. And 7 LPD, back to net. Okay, Robert. Yes, there is a uh, on Tuesday nights, and uh, I'm going to defer up to uh, Jerry, W5RCQ, but there is a two meter vertically polarized um, net on, uh, on uh, I think it's 144, 450, but. Uh, 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 Jerry, why don't you uh, tell uh, Robert about that net? Uh, go ahead, Jerry. Yeah, good evening or good morning, I should say. Yeah, we meet on uh, Tuesday, uh, 8.30, 144.450, uh, uh, vertically polarized. There's five or six of us fairly regularly, and uh, we don't really have a net control. It's a round table, and uh, you're more than welcome to join W5RCQ. Okay, appreciate it. Yep, got that information wrote down, and yeah, I got a vertical at about 65 feet, so that should work. Thank you, N7 LPD. Okay, very good. Well, maybe uh, maybe you'll add one to the group there, then uh, Jerry, and and that's uh, that's awesome. Uh, you know, a lot of us are horizontally polarized only on uh, two meters, and uh, and so. You know, um, th that makes it hard, but uh, uh, some of us also down the road may do a similar uh, roundtable on AM, but horizontally polarized. So, uh, you know, not uh, just so that more of us can uh, maybe try uh, try our hand at 2-meter AM with some of the old uh, boat anchor uh, type uh, radios. So that that's what we were talking about there, uh, uh, Robert. But anyway, hopefully, uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll we'll get quite a uh, quite a group of AMers here. I I would love that. Uh, let's see. Next on our list is uh, Dave K7LOL. Uh, Dave, over to you. Uh, Dave, I'm I'm gonna need a relay for you. I'm not copying you real well this morning. Uh, Robert, can you uh, can you relay for Dave, please? Yeah, go ahead, Dave. So uh, I was interested in hearing uh, about the solar radio and such. I noticed that the solar radio.
got today, March 24th. So, anyway, uh, it should be an interesting day. It's a strong class, G3 class geomagnetic storm. So, the sun is definitely still showering us with all kinds of fun stuff. Anyway, uh, very good. And uh, let's see, back to Doug. Uh, Doug, he basically was uh, just having an interesting day listening about the uh, solar weather there. So, back to you, K70 okay, and 780. Yeah, okay. Uh, and I apologize. Uh, normally, I can copy you quite well there, uh, Dave. So, I don't know what's going on uh, today. But... Uh, Anyway, yeah, that you know, there the, the, that uh, solarweather.com uh, or whatever it is exactly that that is a real cool site, and there is so much stuff going on that uh, it, it is interesting to uh, to uh, monitor that that and then uh, see you know uh, on uh, HF or whatever band you're you're on. Uh, how that affects uh, the propagation because it uh, it's a pretty cool site. I uh, wish we had something like that uh, a long time ago. Um, you know, it would it's it's uh, really nice to have that information right at your fingertips. Uh, let's see, Warren is next. K seven C W A. Over to you uh, in Apache Junction, there, Warren. K seven E M E. K seven C W A. Kevin, uh, uh, looking at the rain gauge here and. Uh, it's just not raining right now, but it's just off and on drizzle and all that. And uh, so far, we've accumulated uh, overnight and this morning uh, just under a half inch. So uh, we are getting some rain up this way. Also, I decided to do a little research on uh, an antenna I used to use many years ago, uh, about 60 years ago, I guess. My goodness. Anyhow, it was a Chris Craft uh, 20 element uh, collinear array beam, and I had such good luck with that. But apparently, it didn't sell well or something because it just simply is not even mentioned uh, on the internet. But I am just blown away by the price of antennas now. I can't believe it. A single 13 element Yagi is 340 bucks. My goodness. And uh, a four element uh, two meter Yagi, they went a uh, hundred and seventy, well, eighty, yeah, a hundred and eighty dollars for a four element. I'll tell you, that's, gone, that's bonkers. They have one antenna, and it's an FM antenna, but it's uh, uh, 26 elements, I guess. It's, it's a pair of antennas mounted together and all that, and they want. Uh, uh, like 750 bucks for that one. Don't remember exactly what the price was. And uh, anyhow, I'm not going to be buying any antennas, that's for sure. And it gives me new respect for the antenna I had, the, the stacked uh, square loops that I had. Uh, I forget who the manufacturer was, but it uh, claims 9 dB gain, and it's, you know, it's what I've been using, and it really works well. And, and so. Uh, and I remember they weren't real cheap, but, but hey, it sure pay a lot for a little bit of metal. That's about it from here. K7EME, K7CWA. Oh, yeah, I I know. The uh, price of aluminum tubing, uh, uh, 60, uh, uh, 16, I think it is, uh, aluminum tubing that's used a lot for antenna projects, is, uh, is really uh, gotten expensive. Um, the uh, uh, especially if you order it from a place like uh, DX Engineering or or uh, some of these places. I know I was shocked uh, three or four years ago when I built uh, a couple of uh, uh, two meter, excuse me, two twenty two meter, uh, uh, excuse me, two two hundred and twenty two megahertz. Um, antennas for EME and uh, had to order a bunch of uh, a bunch of aluminum tubing and now I'm sure uh, it's uh, it's even even more so yeah expensive uh, raw materials there for sure um, you know I, I uh, um, it, it, no matter they get you coming and going that's for sure and then if you get them already you know commercially uh, yeah there's uh, there's two meter um, Antennas out there that uh, um, definitely, uh, if you run a pair of them, can uh, 
can set you uh, back well over a thousand dollars. So it uh, it it gets up there. All right. Well, uh, you have a good uh, good rest of your week there, uh, Warren. We had uh, KC7BEQ. Barry was in here, in and out. So let's go to Ken K7. Or excuse me, W7KZM. Uh, Ken, uh, how's things going up there in Marana? Hey, you caught me off guard there. Uh, very good. Uh, I was hearing everybody talking about the storm uh, last night. Uh, to, uh, listen to it. Uh, my wife told me about it when I woke up this morning. Um, I uh, I had uh, my family over last week, and uh, my wife ran us all to death. And uh, after they left, I, I was horizontally polarized for about three or four days. I started to get back up now and do projects. Uh, otherwise, it's been pretty uneventful. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice day, and uh, I think they'll keep it that way. So uh, thanks a lot. I hope you guys all have a good week. Uh, wish you to keep it in all right. Thanks for the update there, uh, Ken. And uh, you you do have a good week. Uh, we'll uh, we'll catch you next Sunday. Uh, KD5NLP, Mike, uh, up in Glendale. You are next. Go ahead, Mike. KD5NLP. All right, uh, let's see, Vince, k 7 B and e was in and out. So was uh, Lee, WJ0F. And so how about you, Jim, uh, WX7G, go ahead. Right, thank you very much, Doug. Yeah, good morning, everybody. This is the a beautiful downtown Gilbert, Arizona with the Tim Tano. Uh, well, not Tim Tano, Swat. Sorry about that, wrong end. Uh, three, six, six. Hopefully you guys make it up down for there in Tucson, uh, Doug. And uh, uh, other than that, a uh, safe trip back to uh, <laughs> back to Barbecue City. Uh, with that, WX7G, uh, back to net control. Yeah, okay, very, very good, uh, Jim. Yeah, I think uh, I can probably manage that without any trouble uh, up there. So we'll, uh, we'll uh, see about that. And appreciate, uh, yeah, the trip to, I haven't been to Kansas City in a number of many decades, I think, other than maybe the airport or something. But but uh, my brother used to live uh, on the Missouri side of that. So uh, we used to get there fairly often and been a long time. So looking forward to uh, the opportunity to uh, visit, uh, at least for a day or so anyways. Uh, let's see, K, uh, Gene, uh, K7, uh, GZB, you are next. And, uh, so, uh, you are a neighbor. Tell us about, uh, about your, uh, station there. And, uh, again, welcome to the net. Uh, over to you. Hey, okay, Doug, good deal. Um, uh, well, uh, first thing is apologies about the radio. Um, this is a new, uh, FT991. And I had not been able, I have not had given, taken the time to go through and set the audio. But uh, anyway, uh, let's see, K7 Golf Lulu Bravo was a call since January 59. And uh, that was from the Pacific Northwest. Uh, oh, I did a bunch of VHS and UHS stuff up there. Uh, I think my most memorable was in May of 76 for the 432 moon bounce to Stanford. And uh, oh, let's see, I'm active on six, been active on six uh, ever since I was licensed and um, oh, let's see I've got worked all states I still have about 100 grids to get for Fred Fish but um, anyways uh, let's see um, I've been through the Tucson area since 95 
and uh, we bought this house in Picturux in 2009. And uh, uh, exactly, it is a quarter of a mile east on Ina from Ina and San Dario. So uh, not too far away from your place. So uh, let's see. This particular radio, like I said, is a 991. <clears throat> the other station, I guess station number one, would be an Elecraft station um, active on uh, 6 meters and uh, 40 meters. They do a happy hour net every afternoon on 7282 at about 2330 Zulu. So uh, anyway, let's see. Uh, this week's project <clears throat> is to uh, put together, uh, let's see, today I'm supposed to be building the 2-meter egg beater and the diplexer. So uh, anyway, keep kind of busy over here. Okay, well, very good. Thanks for the rundown on that. Sounds like you've uh, had a lot of experience on uh, BHF, UHF, and uh, and the Moon Bounce on uh, 432. That's one band I have not yet done, and I'm not... Uh, uh, I, but but it's on my list. I I've got everything I need except for uh, uh, the antennas uh, for that. Um, probably some cross daggies or something. Uh, so eventually I will play with that band as well. But but uh, I'm glad uh, I'm glad you're here, and uh, um, you know we'll have to uh, we'll have to uh, maybe have an eyeball with Chuck one of these uh, days since you and Chuck uh, know each other. Uh, well, so I, your call sounds so familiar. I may have heard you on, um, but uh, it, it does sound familiar there, Gene. Anyway, um, get get the egg beater up. At least it'll be uh, kind of hor horizontally polar. I think omni. No, it's both. A little bit of both. Uh, I I forget what those egg beaters are. Anyways, um, uh, something um, you know maybe you can. Uh, even a dipole, you might uh, you might hear uh, some more uh, of the stations out there. Uh, we always have a lot of fun, so welcome aboard. Let's see, we had uh, we had a surge, of course, KT6KT up in Las Vegas with a a beautiful uh, copy uh, today, and W7IXA was in and out as well. Doug up there in uh, Scottsdale. So that gets us to the bottom of the list. Are there any other uh, check-ins, uh, late check-ins for the Arizona SWATnet? Comments. Comments are not allowed, Steve. Uh, <laughs> no, go ahead. Well, this might be a QST for you, Doug. Uh, when you get to Kansas City there, remember that you will be treading on sacred land you will be in the Chiefs Kingdom. Oh, okay, the Chiefs Kingdom. Now, I know that that might be something that would be disagreed with uh, by one of your neighbors up there. I mean, I'm not sure I want to get into the middle of that one, you know. No Broncos. <laughs> so what is a Bronco? Is that a disease? <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, I, I got to remain neutral here, I guess, huh? 85 LP. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Uh, welcome back. Go ahead, take your turn. Yeah, Doug, uh, God, I miss you. Have a nice night for the We're coming off the same weather. But uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're coming in very good now. But uh, your signal is uh, going up and down the last uh, so 15, 20 minutes. So but everything's okay now. And, uh, Okay, very good, Mike. Uh, yeah, I'll probably uh, I'll probably be on thirty six ninety five uh, as usual, and uh, so sounds uh, sounds good. And yeah, propagation uh, between us and your you and your station and this one uh, can be up and down. I've noticed over uh, over uh, the years here, but uh, but I'm glad uh, I'm glad we got you in there. So appreciate uh, that. Hopefully, when uh, when the antenna gets rebuilt and uh, back up to uh, the way it should be, uh, we won't have that problem anymore. So sounds good. Uh, so final call. Any other uh, late check-ins? 
Yeah, go ahead, Robert. Okay, well, for those uh, user contesters, the Central States VHS Society is going to sponsor the uh, spring sprints again, and 144 megahertz sprint is on April 1st from 7 to 11 p.m. local, and use exchange for uh, character grid square. On April 16th is the 220, and April 24th of the uh, 432, and Saturday, May 5th is uh, 902 and up. And then lastly, the 50 megahertz one will be on May the 11th. Over. Okay, I'll have to get those dates. I'll look that up, and um, we'll add that to the uh, to the announcements here on uh, on the uh, upcoming. Um, uh, spring sprints, because that, yeah. Uh, thank you for bringing that up, uh, Robert. Oh, no problem. I got an email from him. So, anyway, very good. 7 3 and 7 8. Yeah, okay, 7 3s. And I guess that's the end of the net. No takers on the uh, late check in, so we'll uh, shut things down at this time. And uh, uh, you guys all have a, have a terrific uh, rest of your week. I'm going to stop the streaming.